the Switch 2 will hopefully be gracing us with its presence in 2024. And as always, the hype is real with rumors, speculation, and just, well, let's face it, outright attention baiting lies just flying all over the place. Now, that's not the sort of content I put out here on the channel. However, I wanted to have a little fun today and talk about 10 third party games that I would love to see come to this next iteration of the system. Now, let me know your picks in the comments down below and subscribe if you do enjoy this video. It helps out the channel a huge amount. The majority of today's games released in 2023, but I've got a couple of older ones in here as well, and even a series or two. We'll actually be starting with one of those then, and that is Yakuza, which is a personal favorite of mine. For me, basically, this game, it just picked up where Shenmue left off. Now, I'm not expecting all of them. I'd just love to see the remastered or Kiwami collection of Yakuza 1 through 4 on the system, as well as the more recent entries. That's going to be the Judgment series and Like a Dragon, which introduced a new protagonist. Now, Like a Dragon notably changed the game by switching to turn-based combat, a departure from the series' traditional brawler style. Now, for the uninitiated, these games are small, open-world adventure games focused on exploring a town and dealing with rival gangs and personal challenges. Interestingly, the first two Yakuza games, they were released on the Wii U, but never made it to the Switch itself. Now, the head of RGG Studios, the creators of Yakuza, actually addressed this. He pointed out two main issues for porting to the system. That is the consoles of power, and then its perception in Japan as a console for children. But he also did at least acknowledge that this perception might be evolving as seen with games like Doom. This conversation now it took back quite a while ago. With the advent of the new generation though, I'm optimistic that these perceptions have shifted, so I think it really is about time. F1 is my favorite racing game, and it's a shame it never made it to the Switch. I really do want to see that change though. These games developed by Codemasters just excel in recreating the sport with in-depth career modes, exceptional physics, and stunning visuals. They even added a story mode, which I initially thought I'd dislike, but it turned out to be a guilty pleasure. Now sure, these stories are family friendly, but they also serve as an excellent introduction to the sport and its rules, which I think can only be a good thing. I've already invested a decent amount of hours into F1 as well over the years, but having it on the Switch would likely make it one of my most played games. Also, it's important to mention that EA acquired Codemasters, which initially worried me about potential microtransactions, but thankfully it hasn't been too bad this far. We should also then see other sports games on the Switch too, like a version of FIFA that is on par with other platforms and Madden, even if it has been weak now for a few years, because let's face it, there's definitely still an audience for it. Alan Wake 2 was an unexpected favorite for me in 2023. Now, as a big fan of the original and the team behind it, I had some doubts about whether the sequel would deliver or if it was maybe too late for this series. Unfortunately, I was happy to be proven wrong. It's an incredible psychological horror survival game that brings a unique spin on the genre. It's just filled with memorable moments like the old gods of Asgard music section. It is a must see for anyone who hasn't yet. The story then picks up with Alan Wake who disappeared 13 years ago and was thought to be dead but was actually trapped in the dark place, a realm that materializes your deepest fears. Now he's back bringing that terror with him. The game has great writing, stunning visuals, and yes, I do think the combat could be better, a statement I would share about the original game, honestly, but overall, love to see this game on the Switch too. Also, its reliance on heavy shadows and darkness would be a real test for the system as well, similar to how it challenges the Steam Deck. Street Fighter 6 might seem like an unusual choice for the Switch given the platform's reputation for lacking robust online communities. A crucial aspect for a fighting game where, you know, frame rate parity with other platforms is also going to be essential. However, as we transition into this new generation, I'm hopeful that the Switch 2 will support comparable frame rates and that crossplay will become a more common feature, something many developers currently overlook for the system. Now, so far, I haven't spent a huge amount of time with Street Fighter 6, even though I did pick it up at day of release for PS5. But from what I have seen, I know I like it a lot. The game's new visuals are impressive, and its gameplay feels to be amongst the best the series has seen in some time. Not to mention, as well, tons of different modes. 
Now, while there's not much more to add to this, we've seen efforts like Mortal Kombat, so I'd love to see Street Fighter get that same treatment. Additionally, I'd love to see Guilty Gear Strive on the Switch. It's my favorite fighter on current gen hardware, and Arc System Works, they truly created a masterpiece with that release. Recently, I featured Robocop Rogue City on the channel discussing its cancellation for the Switch. However, I remain hopeful that it will make its way to the next generation of Nintendo's console. Now, looking at the game, it's evident that significant work and downgrades would be needed to run it on current hardware, but I believe it deserves a chance in the spotlight. The development team, though small, has done justice to the character with a blend of gunplay and detective style elements. The story then, set between Robocop 2 and 3, involves tackling a new wave of crime, and I've really enjoyed playing this one. There's also just been an update as well regarding them adding new game plus giving me now a reason to go back what sets this game apart is its deliberate slow clunky movement a characteristic typically avoided in first person shooters but one that fits perfectly with a robocop character also they just capture the character's strength Tales of Arise, a favorite action RPG of mine, originally released in 2021, and I think this is a game that Bandai Namco should port to the Switch too. It is visually stunning, the world is fantastic, and yeah, I'd just love to have this game on the go. I also think the combat is a series best yet, and since its release, the game also received an expansion titled Beyond the Dawn, which adds 20 hours of gameplay. This includes a new story arc, along with new bosses, dungeons, and side quests. Packaging this expansion with the main game would likely be the best way to do this. Then, the story features a likeable cast, and it revolves around a man and a woman from opposing worlds striving to overthrow a Depression. Definitely tackles some pretty mature themes as well, which I really appreciated. And yeah, I'd for sure be happy to double dip to play through this one again. Dead Space is a recent remake, and it was a classic game to begin with. This build did the game justice, improving the visuals and even some of the story delivery, but maintaining what made it special. In fact, many of the jump scares remain the same, yet they still got me, and I've played through the original now countless times. An ultra-violent survival horror game, you are Isaac on a routine mission to repair a mining ship when it becomes apparent something has gone wrong. Doesn't help matters then that your partner Nicole was on board and is now missing. Pretty much non-stop action from the opening moments and I hope we see more Dead Space in the future. Now this then would actually be the second Dead Space game to grace a Nintendo console because previously we got Dead Space Extraction which was an on-rails shooter on the Wii. Great fun that one as well, would love to see a rebuild of it, I think it was completely underappreciated. Death Stranding, another older release, is definitely a game that defies opinion. You either love it or you hate it. I personally love it. Now then it's described by some as an action game. Others label it as a delivery simulator. I believe Death Stranding is much more than that. Its gameplay involves extensive exploration and, yes, delivering packages using unique methods. However, it's the narrative that wins a concept of an event, creating a bridge between the living and the dead. And the player's task is to navigate these dangerous lands where death lurks at every time. Turn. Additionally, the opening scene of Death Stranding is one of the best in recent video game history. The way the scene unfolds with sound effects fading out and the music beginning creates one of the most cinematic experiences I have ever seen in a video game. On that note then, the anticipation for Death Stranding 2 is high and I'm eagerly awaiting it personally, hopefully very soon, but bringing both of these titles to the new Switch system would be a fantastic move. I already own this game twice, I'd be up for owning it a third time. Elden Ring is another game I couldn't resist double dipping on. After initially getting it for console, wanted to experience it on the Steam Deck and I was not disappointed. Undoubtedly the most challenging game on my list today, it's another incredible creation by From Software. And what really sets Elden Ring apart for me is its world design and world of building. Now the narrative might seem elusive at first, but this it is intentional. The game is just renowned for rewarding players who embrace exploration and satisfy their natural curiosity. Additionally, the world of Elden Ring is rich with smaller side stories that provide deeper insights into the events unfolding around the player. For many, however, the combat is the standout feature. Elden Ring demands mastery of its mechanics, encouraging experimentation with character builds and adapting weapons and playstyle because here, a single mistake can often result in death. 
Elden Ring is possibly from Software's best game to date, though they consistently just outdo themselves with each new release. Speaking of their other titles, they recently released Armored Core, another game that I would love to see make its way to the Switch too. Baldur's Gate 3 is the final game in this video and its potential release on the upcoming system is a topic of much speculation. While there are rumours about its arrival on the platform, they remain of course unconfirmed because the system itself is also unconfirmed. A key question for me is how well can it be optimised to run on the new hardware? I'm hoping personally that the Switch 2 will surpass the capabilities of the Series S but most likely not reach the levels of the PS5 or Series X. That might mean accepting some compromises from day one. For instance, on the Series S, Baldur's Gate 3 experiences significant load times and a reduction in resolution and detail, particularly in the shadows. Personally, I'd be willing to accept these compromises for the convenience of playing it on the go. I did try playing it on the Steam Deck, but that was pre-deck verification, so I do need to now jump back in and check it out. I'm curious to see what they did with the UI. The game itself, then, would be an excellent addition to the Switch 2's library. It's just an exceptional experience. It's as good as people say, and I have been playing it now for months. It won the Game of the Year award that is well deserved, and for fans of classic RPGs, this one is a must-play title. So that's 10 games I'd love to see on the next iteration of the Switch, and I could list a huge amount of other games. Honkai Star Rail, Lords of the Fallen, GTA 6 might prove too powerful, still love to see it, and then of course Call of Duty, but with that one I know Microsoft said they would want to bring the series to the Switch, so I didn't feel like the need to include it today, but as I say, this list could go on and on. So what would you like to see on the new system? Let me know in the comments. With that, hit subscribe, join us here for reviews, deals, news and lists daily, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.